has this ever happened to you? You're walking around in your RPG Maker game, just doing your own thing, and then suddenly it hits you. You can't stop noticing it. The sprites are so ugly. It's not that the art style's inherently bad, but they're so stiff, right? I mean, look at that. Default RPG Maker graphics only have three frames of animation in each direction, which gives it this sort of stilted effect. But not to worry, because I heard about this cool plugin called Q Sprite, and it makes your sprites better in RPG Maker, and I'm just gonna plug it in and press test play, and it'll be super awesome and cool and... Oh. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna add in my Q Plus plugin, and then... Okay, I'll put Q Plus first in the plugin list, and then it'll be so super awesome and amazing and... Oh my god, why does it keep needing things? Uh, let's do a tutorial on it. The Qxios? Quixos? Q series of plugins for RPG Maker MV are freaking amazing. Especially when it comes to Q Sprite, the developer of these plugins put in a lot of effort to make sure that you can really customize your game. People ask me all the time how I do my sprites, and to be honest, the Q Sprite plugin is a big part of it. The Q Sprite plugin allows you to set up as many frames as you want, different idle animations, all sorts of things. But it's not the most beginner friendly plugin, especially if you've just been working with default RPG Maker, and definitely requires some setup. But no worries, we'll go through all of it. Let's start by downloading the plugin. Go to quixios.github.io and this is their plugin site. Plugins. For every Q plugin, you need Q. So download Q. To download from GitHub, you can just click download raw file over here. Now, Q Sprite is a little bit more difficult to download. The plugin file, easy, go ahead and grab that. But also, you want to download this Q Sprite editor. And it's going to take you to the GitHub for this. Scroll down to where you see this blue word pre-built and download a pre-built version of the editor. That's going to give you a zip file. Unzip your zip file, preferably into a folder of its own, and then click on qspriteeditor.exe. And here's what you'll see. QSprite plugin does not work without the editor, so get used to seeing this screen. To start, you click load, and you go to your game project file. So here's my tutorial project file, and then you just open the .rpg project of your game. And then you'll see nothing. So in our blank project, let's create a new pose, and you'll see the first thing that's popped up is config zero. Config? Basically what it is, it's a preface that you put at the beginning of every single image that you want to use this posing setup. The naming convention for the actual files are going to be percent sign, your config name, and then the rest of the name of the sprite sheet. So let's just name ours party member. And we need a sample image. Immediately, I found this chick. Link in the description below. If I wasn't already making my own sprites, I would 100% use this sprite. Look, look at the jiggle physics. She has eight frames of standing animation. That'll be perfect to set up our idle. She has 10 frames of walking and then eight frames of running. So she looks perfect. Let's open up this sprite and see what we're working with. So, because this is three separate images, we're going to need to combine them all into one. So let's open it up with GIMP. One of the best things about the Q Sprite editor is that it doesn't follow the RPG Maker basic rules for setting up a sprite sheet. However, you still do need to honor the column and row system. In a sprite sheet, each little individual image is its own cell. In the QSprite editor, you tell the editor how many rows and how many columns you have, and then it divides the image up into different cells. 
Because I have three images and they're all four cells high, what I'm going to do is I am just going to change the canvas size, height by 300%. And so I'll just bring those in. Since this is walking, I think I'll move it I'll bring in our running first. And I have snap to grid on, so the edge of this image will just snap to the grid and line up my cells perfectly. And then I'll bring in the idle. And there. Now, Let's put this into our characters folder, but let's set it up with that particular naming convention. So percentage sign, and then we called it party member. And then I like to add a little dash and we'll call her blue. PNG. Now we should be able to load that image in to our sprite editor. We're going to open her up as a sample image and there she is, party member blue. Nice. Four times three is 12. So she is 12 rows and she is 10 columns. So let's set it up for, whoops. Let's set it up for 10 columns and then 12 rows. And there we go, each individual cell. Now, QSprite works with poses. It has a few built-in poses. Move, dash, and idle are all built-in poses. So let's start with our move pose. Come over here to pose properties and name it. There are numbers for each directions in RPG Maker. If you do any coding with RPG Maker, you actually probably already know that. But two is down, four is left, six is right, and eight is up. So let's do her walking down pose first. So we're going to call this move two. And here's how we start adding frames. We're just going to click, 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 and add all of those frames in. Now, if we watch her, she's a little slow motion, so we can adjust the speed. Let's do five. Eh, let's try seven. Let's try six. There we go. Her boobs are bouncing breastily and she looks pretty good. So now let's do a new pose. This one is going to be move four, speed six, and we're going to just add in our frames. There she goes. Do that again for every direction. So we have four directional walking movements. Now let's set up running. So we're just going to name it dash instead of move. And down will be two, so dash two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that speed definitely needs to go up. Let's, nope, that's too much. Let's try five. Do that for every pose. Okay, and now we have our dashing. So the final pose we're going to set up is our idle pose. It works the same way as the others. You can do idle in different directions. So idle two is going to be the looking down idle. And let's just load in our frames. 
Oh my god, she's really bouncing. Speed seven. <laughs> Do that one last time for all of our directions. Okay, and now we have all of our poses and all of our directions. Let's click save and see if it actually works in the game. Let's switch out our main character's image to party member blue. Just ignore how RPG Maker is clearly not recognizing our weird sprite sheet. It really doesn't matter. Oh my god, there she is. She sure is bouncing. Here's her running. Here we are walking. Okay. So I've noticed a couple of issues. Our walking animation speed is way too fast. So let's go back and just adjust that. Instead of six, it should probably be like eight. Same with idle. Instead of seven, let's make it like nine. Sometimes you just have to mess with stuff until it looks right. There we go. That's more natural. Is this video going to get flagged <laughs> because of chibi jiggle physics? So let me show you one of the coolest parts of QSprite. I've gone back to our file where we have the image and I've decided I want this girl to have a twin sister with a different hair color. So let's make party member green. As long as we keep the exact same naming convention, any images with this preface will use our setup sprite poses. Switch to green, even though we haven't messed with green in the actual editor, she should work just fine in the game. <laughs> yep, she sure does. Green bounces just as well as blue. So that already looks so much more natural than the way it looked before. But I still have issues with it. Specifically, I kind of don't like the tile-based movement system of RPG Maker. So now that we've mastered QSprite, let me tell you guys the other plugin that I use to control my movement. The plugin that I use for movement is actually a plug and play, super easy plugin, San Analog Move. So let's go to the GitHub and get this plugin. It should work already with QSprite. You just need to put it above the Q plugins. Heck yeah. And let me show you the coolest thing about San Analog Move. Let's add another party member. Let's make her blue. And look, it changes the way that followers follow you in such a satisfying way. Watch her catch up. And if you know a thing or two about coding, you can actually go into the plugin code and change that distance, which is what I did for my game. I wanted a little bit more distance, but yeah. Now green and blue will go on their adventure and not be super stiff about it. Shout out to Vin.2804 for requesting this video. And if any of you guys found it helpful, let me know. Also, if you have any other things you would like me to do tutorials on, leave a comment below. I will try to do it if I know how to do it. Sometimes you guys ask me to do things and I'm like, I have no idea. Ah. Let me know what you think about the Q series of plugins. Have you ever used them? Do you want to use them? Do you want me to go into depth about more of them? I've used all of them extensively. Not every single Q plugin has made it into the final version of my game, or the final as it stands right now version of my game, but I do know my way around these plugins. And sometimes they're a little bit harder to use just because they take the engine so far away from the default. It's actually so cool. That's why I love them so much. But anyway, feel free to like the video if you liked it and dislike the video if you didn't. I have an email in the description where you can ask me questions, send me your game to play or just whatever. I also have the largely neglected itch.io for my game and my Ko-Fi linked in the description. So check those out if you have the time. And thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you next week. Bye!